Okay, so I was asked to do a video on purse string suture. There's basically um, two ways of doing the purse string suture, either with a fully buried absorbable stitch or with a non-absorbable stitch through the surface. So if we're doing the fully buried type, we basically want to go around the perimeter of the wound um, in a very similar way as you would do buried dermal stitches at uh, that sort of a level or a subcuticular stitched level but the better the, the more you bury it the better so if we just pick up the edge of the skin a little bit and just grab a bit of dermis as we would with our normal buried stitch a little bit of a mound there come through and you want to take about only about a third of the needle curvature don't push it too much otherwise it will bend you'll struggle to get it through in position about a third to a half of the needle curvature don't grab the sharp tip okay and then leave a little bit of a gap it doesn't need to be right up against it in and out similar distances just grab it again that could, could could do with a little bit more grabbing there we are come out in the fat each time I'm going to resist the temptation to turn the fake skin around because you usually can't do that with a human. Um, and we just go around and around, repeating that same sort of movement. Or you can take a pencil grip like this, and then you can sort of twizzle it in and out as a bit more like easily perhaps not showing it very easily here and you see there I've taken too big a bite because I'm getting caught up a bit and then it's just not holding properly in the instrument so let's take a different position and you see I'm kind of making it awkward for myself sewing backwards against myself so when you do that it's always worth thinking about is there an easier way of doing it and can I reposition myself so let's move myself around this way around where the patient would be and make it easier, you see. Grab a bit of a dimple. Grab another one. Okay, I need to get a bit more grip on this needle. Fairly chunky needle. Let's see how much gap we've got. So we've got a bit of a gap there, which is probably okay. We could perhaps make it slightly smaller. I don't want to be right up against it. There we go, that'll do. And then make sure they're not actually overlapping. And then it should be just a question of grabbing both ends and pulling them a little bit. So for, as we pull them, we should see the edges draw in. And we can see here, it's a, just over two centimeters hole um, and then as we draw it together we expect it to close by you know to down to maybe about 50 percent of what it was when you get to about there you're starting to think oh i could pull it a bit more but what will happen is that the um, stitch will break so don't push it too far you know get it to 75 percent 50 percent something like that and that's going to be about where you can get it to for most of the wounds of this sort of size on a scalp, something like that. If you pull it further, it will snap. So then we've got the two ends like this. And then we need to do our first two throws of our surgeon's knot as we would with anything. Bring that down. So at that point, you're either gonna need assistant to help you hold it, or you're gonna to need to use your, uh, some form of tightening slipping knot, which I'll cover in another video.
but basically so we're going to take that like that and you pull it like that quit while you're ahead slip it down and that's going to hold in place and then you finish it off i've left far too much thread on here just for demonstration purposes you make it shorter in real life so you're not wasting loads of thread and then you would just um, snip it as normal I haven't got the right scissors to hand there we go um, and then what will happen is that will gradually heal by secondary intention and it will fill in the edges will come together and then all these bobbly bits will sit down and it will flatten over a period of weeks so you tell the patient that not to be alarmed it's going to look very odd for a bit and then it will all sort itself out um, and as far as dressings are concerned, you'd usually put in an alginate dressing um, for a few days, just while it's exuding um, in the first stage, producing lots of slough. And then we change that to a hydrocolloid dressing and a patient could ch usually change that themselves at home every two or three days um, as it fills up and starts to detach. And just keep doing that until it fills in, which will depend on how big it is and the patient's uh, general nutritional status, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but it's likely to be a few weeks for something like that. Sometimes a few months if you're unlucky. Um, so uh, there we have it. Sometimes you get to this stage, and you feel actually I've very, very nearly closed it together, and <clears throat> and then I actually think well. It's going to heal even quicker if we can close some of these little bits. So you might put a little stitch in here, bring a little stitch in just, you know, but you just got to make sure you don't collide with your purse string stitch underneath. And you might just close it a little bit more. And it's still going to look odd, but it's going to heal a little bit quicker. And often that's the priority for patients who are doing this on. Um, which brings me on to saying, why do we use this technique? Um, and basically you're going to use this if you can't close something so um, if you've got a wound that just doesn't just a bit too big to close directly maybe you don't want to do a skin graft or you haven't got time to do a skin graft but you want to excise the lesion um, or the patient can't you know cope with the aftercare or whatever then um, sometimes this is a very practical thing to do on a scalp or back of the hand as long as it's um just a skin lesion and not uh, involving fascia um, on the back of the hand um, and you might do it even on the shin of the leg the lower leg anterior um, and basically it's a pragmatic way of speeding up the healing of what would otherwise be a larger secondary intention wound because so how fast it's going to heal depends on the uh, area and obviously if you shrink that area down 50 percent it's going to heal a lot quicker maybe even 50% of the time, but certainly a lot quicker, which is going to benefit everybody. Fewer dressings, visits, um, quicker healing for the patient. The other thing is that um, you're going to fill in with very similar tissue um, as the surroundings. So you're not transplanting a, a graft from another area that may have a different colour or texture that's permanently going to look like a bigger round mark that people don't necessarily like on an exposed scalp. Uh, depending on their skin type. So although it's going to be lumpy and probably um, darker in colour or reddish uh, for the first few months of healing, it may end up being more similar to the surroundings and a smaller scar than if you just put a big uh, pale graft um, or smooth graft um, in there. Um, so that's also particularly useful in a hair bearing area where you can't really graft hair very effectively. Usually you can have a go, but it doesn't work that well. And you don't want a hairless graft in a hair bearing area of scalp. So actually doing secondary intention healing, the scar is going to contract and draw the wound edges together, which is going to produce a much better end result, a smaller patch of hair loss than if you put a graft in. So um, you can leave it for secondary intention and you can use a purse string just to uh, shrink down that area even further and sometimes that means that then once it's healed you may even be able to just excise the scar and close it directly and make it even smaller after a few months of stretching and what have you um, so a useful technique so the other way of doing a purse string suture is with a non-absorbable stitch going through the skin surface and then you take it out after a period of time probably 10 to 14 days so 
and when doing that you would go in a little bit back from the skin so that it's not going to tear through you'd come out normally take only about a half uh, to a third of the curvature of the needle um, just go in again it's so hard to resist the temptation of just turning this model round but uh, because we can't spin patients around I'm gonna persevere um, and what we have to do is turn ourselves around or move around the patient on the bed and make it more ergonomic or if you're ambidextrous suture with the other hand or you can turn the needle around so normally you've got it the other way around you can turn it this way around but the best thing is to do is move yourself so that you're ergonomically positioned and then resist the temptation to press with the finger and press with an instrument instead don't grab the sharp tip bring it through and we can sew in reverse like this sometimes that's more ergonomic and bring it through give it a bit more of a push so we're not grabbing the tip all right so then we've got that sort of appearance which is more really the traditional purse string uh, from an actual purse or old-fashioned purse to put coins in and then we're going to just tie it up the same as we would anything but you can see as we pull it together it will draw the wound together in a very similar way so, but we're going to need to put a surgeon's well we're going to put the first two throws of a surgeon's knot in uh, like that just to hold the knot in place and then because it's under tension it's going to slip we're going to need to do something like this just to hold it in position uh, don't put it in that, put it too tight sometimes you might be able to completely close it but normally you're just going to Quit while you're ahead when it's not quite closed. Don't leave as much spare as I have done here because that is very wasteful. Um, but I'm just doing it quickly. Make sure that it works for the purposes of demonstration. And there you have it. So then you're just going to dress that in the same way as I mentioned for the other technique. And um, you're going to be able to take that out after... 10, 14 days probably, because you've got nothing else holding the wound together, um, but the healing should be well underway by that stage. So that's gonna speed things up, but it is awkward to take the stitch out. You're gonna to have to snip it and then pull it through and it's gonna be quite well attached by that stage. So it's gonna be uncomfortable for the patient. Plus it means that they definitely have to have a healthcare visit to do that. So I, in practice, don't really use this. I tend to use the buried because there's no real reason not to, except for when the skin is so fragile you can't get it to hold the buried stitch. And then you're going to need to um, perhaps resort to this at times.